Today we're going to talk about matchers and mismatchers, personality types, and how that can affect relationships because it's it's a big deal. Oh yeah. And it's very interesting. So matchers are people that naturally see how or things are the same, and mismatchers naturally see how things are different. So like for Wayne and I, because we have all these superpowers, I am um, naturally a matcher, and I will look at how things are the same. I'll go, oh, yeah, that's like that, or oh, that reminds me of such and such. Oh, yeah, I can understand that. And I learn really easily because I don't overanalyze as I go along. And Wayne, on the other hand. Well, I'm a mismatcher. Sorta. Sorta. I'm a moderate mismatcher. And the way I became that is because of the way that I grew up. I grew up in a construction family. Uh, we built commercial buildings, uh, did a lot of municipal work, state work, stuff like that. And so I was groomed to look at how everything needed to be um, congruent uh, within an a eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch. It had to be perfect. So I was always looking for what was wrong and making sure that we were ahead of it. And we just couldn't go close enough. It ain't a piano. You know? <laughs> so and that's like in our in our marriage, because because I have more of a, a matcher personality. I'll just go, oh yeah, close enough, and that just like sets Wayne off. Like, <laughs> oh, what do you mean close enough? What do you mean close enough? How can it be close enough? So, but I, it also depends on the context of it does, things. It does. But but let's talk about. Um, well, I can tell you a story about sure. some people that, that uh, we got this story from a realtor. And they was a husband and wife, and he was an extreme mismatcher. I mean, he, like, if you said black, he'd go, ah, it's white, that kind of a thing. So she wanted a very specific house, and they had looked at house after house after house, and anything she liked, he hated, vice versa. So she went out with a realtor separately, and they looked at houses, and she found the one she really wanted, really wanted it. So they said, okay, it's a deal. When we get to this house, just say, I don't even want to go inside. I hate it. So that's what they <laughs> did. And guess what? They ended up buying the house that she liked because her husband, Mr. Mismatcher, had to convince her that this was the perfect house for them and their family. And he convinced her to buy that house against all of her protestations. The, so that, that is a, an example of an extreme mismatcher. Most, right. most people are not like that. Yeah. That was a little manipulative, but hey, she got the house she, she wanted. He ended up he having it. to sell her on that house and why it was so great. It's pretty, pretty hysterical, but what a rough road to hoe. Well, they had a long marriage. They were able to make it. They have children. They're still together. They just, she understood his uh, dynamics. And so it worked out. I mean, it, what, that was an extreme case because buying a house is a very stressful situation anyway. But let's talk about how that affects a relationship oh, because yeah, it does. the other thing that you, you you really have to look at is when you're dating and you're in that pool of people and you're going, can I make it with this person? Is this the person that's right for me? Um, Freddie and I have differences, but it, it all depends on the context of what we're doing. The thing that always saves us is we have tremendous respect and we understand that that other person needs safety and trust. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the foundation and basis in our relationship always. That's non-negotiable. So like for instance, let's use a travel example. Now I'm a mismatcher a lot of the time because that's the way I was groomed and all this stuff. And I always wanna make it better. So that's part of being a mismatcher. But when we travel, I like to get a ticket to where we're going, maybe have a hotel and a pocket full of money and be very flexible and kind of go with the flow. And so I turn it off. Yeah, now, he has to turn it off. Now, tell your version, Freddie. So my version is because I'm not looking at the differences, as Wayne says. <laughs> I'm looking at the sameness. And for me, I want to feel like my... My primary question for years was, how can I be safe? Now it's, what's, what's the good in this? I changed that. But still, that how can I be safe is a little bit in there. So for me, it's like, I got to have the tickets. I check. I check in before we get going. I know exactly what hotel we're staying in. I know what we're going to do when we get there. I know what we're going to eat. All that stuff. I have to have all that ahead of time. I'm getting a little bit better about being a mismatcher over after 29 years. But that's just the difference. And the, and the thing that I really enjoy about 
wayne and also i have some friends that are moderate mismatches is i learn a lot from them because we'll talk about different subjects and they'll they'll go well i studied that you know and that's not really true there are these differences there and have you seen this article blah 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 did you snope it did you snope it and i go i did not so tell me all about that i want to learn about that and i learn a lot from that i i am very happy that i have so many mismatching friends because it helps me to learn a lot well the other thing with matching people is if you're always looking for similarities it you can miss stuff and yeah. one of the things that's so great in a relationship is when you actually have somebody that has your back because they're different right so you get this 360 view uh, what I would call situational awareness because you have somebody looking at things differently than you and and it's super important in a relationship as you're growing and life changes life's gonna change how wonderful would it be to have somebody you had excellent communication with you had all these parts but yet you had somebody a little bit different than you that was really able to kind of cover your butt really yeah. um, and and become a, a powerful couple together you know even a power couple if that's important to you which some people are and it's like i i want to build this thing i want this relationship to have meaning and a mission and all that and so that's where mismatchers and matchers can really they can get along fine get along great it's just it's just like what we talk about in all of our training is that it's you have to understand and be aware and know this stuff so it's really easy to identify a, a matcher they will see what's the sameness they'll say you have to get get along to you have to get along to get along. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah. like that. Anyway, so, you got to yeah. get along to get, get along. along. <laughs> and the, and we're the type of people that it, I've learned over the years to not say yes all the time. I'm better about my boundaries. But that thing we're looking to have, like he says, our differences. And I think about how much we're the same. Yeah, because I'm a mild mismatcher. Yeah. <laughs> So that's what's important that when you go meet somebody and pay attention to their language, a mismatcher will see differences first and then they'll see the similarities. A matcher will see the similarities first and then later they'll go, oh yeah, there are differences. And that's important because it helps you have a stronger base of your relationship and as we've said over and over again, it's all about awareness, knowledge, practice, practices go around see who you know and go oh that person's basically a mismatcher oh i think they're a matcher it's really important when you get into a relationship because then you know what the like wayne says it's either a divorce court irritant or it is a humorous tolerance or your super strength right so i hope this helps and uh, we'll talk to you on our next podcast